What up, what up, what up, Shiro Super Tim? This is another edition of Super TV, the show that shows you everything that goes on in DC area, whether it's hip hop, whether it's comedy, whether it's what's going on around the city, or what's going on in the hoop scene. Let's check out, let's get the show started with a little bit of City Hoops TV. So I'm here with Super Tim. We are in the studio today with one of the, the legends. Of, <laughs> <laughs> he's a legend to me in local basketball. I remember back when I was in high school, everybody in my high school knew me for coming to school every day. I was the only dude coming to school every day with a Washington Post. But like when I bought the Washington Post, Metro section, fuck that. Style yeah. section, fuck that. Yeah, yeah. Straight to the sports. Checking stats, checking scores, checking to see what's going on in the DMV basketball scene. And one name that I always came across when checking this box scores in high school was my guest here today, Mr. Survaliant. Most of y'all know him as Val. Survaliant Brown. What's going on, Val? Oh, man, just chilling. Thanks for having me. Sam, you know. Yeah. Good to have you in. Like I said, as a person who, like I said, I saw the name all the time when I was in high school, checking the high school stats, then... You know what I'm saying you check the college stats and everything. You know what I'm saying you went from high school, you played locally right here at GW, and um, anybody that knows anything about DC basketball knows the name Val Brown. So take us back for those who don't know the history of Val Brown on the basketball scene. Take us back to the mid late '90s and let's the work mid, on that. The, the mid late '90s. All right, we gonna start. You know, uh, just on high school. Then from there, you know. Um, so what high school did you go to? I went to Robert e. Lee Springfield. Um, just an era of dominance, you know, in the, um, in our region. Mm -hmm. You know, um, that was the, some of the funnest years of my life, you know, playing high school ball, you know what I'm saying? So it was all good. So um, started at Robert E. Lee. Um, AAU played with, you know, um, the powerhouse DC Assault, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The best team, AAU team that ever assembled in AAU basketball. And that's, that's huge to say because okay. there's a lot of talented teams out there. Mm -hmm. Um, from there, went to George Washington. Um, well, you know, I led the nation in scoring, you know what I'm saying? Um, you so you know, said they, that they, like, you said it like it was just nothing. Yeah, I just led the nation in yeah, scoring. Yeah, I led the nation scoring as a freshman, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, it's, it's a controversy, you know, of, of um, who really led the nation in scoring out of this dude, Court, Courtney Alexander. Oh, yeah. But technically, you know, he ain't playing, I know, but... 15 games, 10 games. Yeah. I played in all 32, 33 games, mm -hmm. you know. And you miss 15 games, you know, that, that stops your average, you know what I'm saying, where it's at. Yeah, yeah. So, you know what I mean, you could have, you know, someone could have set you out. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So it's controversial who really won, you know what I'm saying, the scoring title. I'm going, I really want to score title because <laughs> I played in all the games, yeah. you know. And, you know, college basketball guys changed that rule, you know what I mean? <laughs> but it's all good, you know what I'm saying? So I did that. Um, um, I decided to stay in school. My sophomore year, you know, I had pressures of leaving school early to turn pro. You know, uh, I wish I should, you know what I'm saying, I left my freshman year. Mm -hmm. But it was just, you know, GW was just uh, a good thing, you know what I mean? Plus, what, I was at home. What made you, well, being at home, is that the one thing that made you go to GW? Because I'm coming from what we're coming Your high school career, knowing how successful you were, I'm sure mm -hmm. you had a lot of offers. Um, but what made you not just stay at home, but out of all the schools that you could have played for at home? Wow. GW. Oh, man, that's a good question. You know, I had a lot of, I definitely had a lot of schools, um, big schools at that. You know, the Dukes, the Merlins, the Georgetowns, the North Carolinas, um, the Kentuckys. Um, and they was in my top ten, actually. You know, um, and what basically made me decide to stay home was uh, <laughs> Tom Penders. He coached at um, University of Texas, and I just love his style of play. And, you know, um, the interview when he came, you know, to my house, um, the first impression was everything. So uh, he sat down with um, me and my uh, my parents at the time, you know what I'm saying? And he basically just told me, hey, listen, please just come to us, you know what I mean? You're going to be the man, I'm going to give you the ball, <laughs> and um, it's going to be your show. Yeah. So, you know, at... Um, 17, 18 at the time, you know, someone a coach tell you that, you basically that basically you know seals the deal, you know, um, when they tell you you're gonna get the ball. And I love his style of play. Um, he's one of the best coaches, you know what I'm saying? Um, fundamental, you know, he teach you all bases. So I've been watching him, and he's been actually recruiting me since seventh grade. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so today I, I don't think you know what I mean the college. 
coaches pay that much attention to kids, you know what I mean? Like how it used to, they they used to recruit in sixth, fifth grade, you know what I mean? To to groom you up to knowing, you know, what they see and where you're going to be. You know, nowadays, it's just people just undecided, you know what I mean? So coaches don't bother, you know what I mean? Yeah. Wasting their time, you know, to recruit how they usually did when I was growing up. But um, he closed the deal, to ask you a question. He closed the deal when he came into the house and was like, hey, yo, Val, the team's going to be yours. Hey, the ball's going to be yours. The university's going to be yours. So I had to take that. He was that. like, um, Jesus Shuttlesworth. Something like that, you know what I mean? That, yeah, that's how he presented it. And like, yo, we just going to give you the keys. And I was like, all right, I'm going to take them. Thank you, you know? So that's what made you go to jail. You say, when did you, um, your career at GW, what did you say, like on a scale of 1 to 10, being at GW and your time there on a success level, how would you rec rate your experience and your success at GW? <laughs> My experience, I was the best, you know what I'm saying? Like. It wasn't one person in the country, you know what I'm saying, a point guard wise that was better than me, you know what I'm saying? And um so if you want me to rank myself, I would say I'm the best, you know what I'm saying? And like, as any athlete would say say that if you know what I mean, if he a real athlete, he would want to say he the best. Mm -hmm. And the numbers speak for itself. So, you know what I mean, everybody gotta say I'm the best, you know what I'm saying? Who better? <laughs> you know what I mean? So once you finish the G <laughs> GW, obviously everybody wants to go pro. So what was your career like once you Finish college and move on to oh, okay. the pros. Um, it's a good question, Tim. You know, just when the journey begins, you know what I mean? <laughs> the real journey. All right, leaving GW, um, I signed. I signed with an agent, well, well represented agent in the DC area. You know, David Falk, he represented yeah. Michael Jordan. You know what I mean? Um, I signed with, with him, <clears throat> with his group, mm -hmm. because I actually never really talked to him. Yeah. You know, it was representatives from his office, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And um, that was that was kind of shady, you know what I mean, off the jump. So um, <laughs> so when come, going into the draft, you know what I mean, I'm, you know, I wouldn't left school early if I didn't think I was going to get drafted, mm -hmm. you know? So I left school early, you know, um, Tom Pendens, it was a big um, scandal, you know, in the university, you know, uh, uh, you know, money issues, but I ain't going to get into all that, you know what I <laughs> mean? Hey, it is what it is, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? It's, it's publicized, so. You know, so it was money issues. I guess you know, uh, people was um, take you know doing stuff. You know, I don't know. I wasn't <laughs> a part of that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Let's get that out there. I wasn't a part of that. You know, um, so he left. So he made basically made my decision pretty easy. You know, but he didn't leave. I think you know the school got got rid of him. You know, get fired or whatever. You know, and um, made my season either turn pro. You know, I'm, I'm going to play with no, no other coach besides Tom Pendens at the time. Mm -hmm. So um, he bounced, I bounced, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So, That's it, so, so, um, so after he left, I thought I was going to turn pro. Got some, had some whack agents. Yeah, you know, David Falk, he's, he's a, you know, I ain't like how they did, you know, the business with me. You know what I'm saying? And um, after that, I just started being my own agent. And, um... After I started being my own agent, no one know your game better than you. Mm -hmm. And start instead of giving, you know what I'm saying, agents, you know, 40%, 30% of your salary, you know what I'm saying? I was keeping all that. Oh, yeah. yeah, so, you know, everybody, the, everybody thinking they need an agent, you know what I'm saying? The agent is basically just a, just like a lawyer. He talks for you, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And you don't need that. You can talk for yourself because yeah. no one know your game better than you. Mm -hmm. A lot of kids don't know that. Yeah. yeah. Cause they got tag-alongs, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They got programs that people, there's agents, you know what I mean, hang on with the program just to get the players, you know what I'm saying? And, oh, that's, that's shady. Yeah, yeah that's a lot shady. of people, I guess from a, like the whole agent standpoint, a lot of people, as far as the players, don't understand the whole contract negotiation, the, yeah. the collective bargaining agreements and how all that works. So, I mean, I guess depending on the player, depends on whether you need an agent or not. Yeah, so, exactly. And it depends on where you, um, what you plan that to? Because I know even you know I'm saying me doing what I do in the entertainment journalism field, I've been told they ain't even gonna let you in the door unless you got an agent representing you. Because at the end of the day, when it comes to the contracts and the legal stuff, they don't need all that drama. Yeah. So it kind of it's 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 not normal for a player to come in on his own and say, "Let's talk." Yeah, exactly. You know but I actually, you know, the um, the owners. You know, um, respect that more because mm -hmm. you know they they can really talk to you and yeah. you talk to the general manager 
and they really talking to you instead of, you know what I mean, the third man, the agent. Yeah. And this is how, you know, the agent um, thing work. I ain't hating on no agent, you know what I'm saying? But I think, you know what I'm saying, players can do it themselves mm -hmm. if they smart, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Only thing the agent do, does for you is talk. You can talk for yourself, you know what I mean? And, and the, the numbers, you know how much you're worth and you know how much you're going to take and not take, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So. It, it ain't that hard. The paperwork, you sign the contract, you read it, you know what I'm saying? And they gonna have a lawyer that basically gonna explain to you this the terms of the deal and all that, you know what I mean? And that's what the agent do. He tell you the terms of the deal. He just wants you to sign. Yeah. So now you're getting from the horse's mouth, you know what I mean, once you're there negotiating for yourself, you know what I mean? And, and, you, and you get more money that way. Oh, yeah. Because you could talk to him direct, like, man, I'm worth more than that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So give me another, you know what I mean? 40, 50,000, you know what I mean? 60,000, 100,000, you know, whatever, you know what I mean? Give me more, you know what I'm mean? saying? So it's easier, you know what I mean, my experience. So that's the best thing I did, you know? Um, so after I um, got out of that situation with the agent, <clears throat> unfortunately, you know what I'm saying, he didn't do his job, so I didn't even get drafted. But thank you know what I'm saying, to God, you know what I'm saying, he made the way out that I didn't get the draft because then I could um, just pick my NBA team that, mm -hmm. I, could, that I could just walk on. So, um... <laughs> I picked um, the, the 76ers, you know what I mean? Larry Brown, he was a character, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Larry Brown, you know what I mean? He's a good, one of the best coaches <laughs> ever, too. You know, um, I got a story about him. <laughs> I got a story for you. <laughs> um, we was in the summer league, you know, and Speedy Claxton, he just came off his knee injury. Mm. And um, I was on the bench, and Speedy, you know, if y'all know Speedy Claxton, NBA champion, um, he came off his knee injury, and he was just better than I think he was before. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm watching him on the bench. I'm like, hey, am I ever going to get in this game? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because this guy, he, he, he is nice. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I, I can't even show I don't even think I'm going to be able to show my stuff. <laughs> so I went to Larry Brown. Well, actually, I was already sitting, you know, because that's my thing. If I'm on the bench, I'm going to be sitting right next to the coach. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when he looked down, he gonna be you gonna be the first one he looking at like, yeah, put me in, yeah, I'm ready. You know what I'm saying? And so um, I was sitting right next to him, and he's having a good game. I'm like, all right, shit, I don't think I'm gonna get in the game. So I'm like, hey, coach, just put me on in, in the two, put me on at the two. You know what I mean? Let me and him play together. You know what I'm saying? Let, let, let me show you what we can do together. Because mm -hmm. I'm thinking like, man, yo, like, yeah, I ain't going to get in the game. If I get in the game, it's only going to be two minutes. And you yeah. know what I mean? Hey, I'm going to just have to shoot the pill because I only got two <laughs> minutes in there. And I love to shoot. So I'm like, yeah, you know what I <laughs> mean? So I said, coach, put me in as a two. He looked at me. I, 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 I wish I never even have said that. <laughs> you know, he looked at me. He was like, sir, we already have someone on the team to shoot 35 times. <laughs> How about you go down, four seats down, you're going to get in the game, but how about you just move away from me? Go down four seats. <laughs> I looked down and said, all right, all right, all right. And then like two minutes later, he put me in, you know what I mean? And I actually had a, one, one, a good game. I think I had like um, <clears throat> 15, like seven assists and like four rebounds, you know, that game. So basically, so yeah, I, I did my thing too. Larry was like, look, son, you're bothering me. You're bothering me. <laughs> You know what I mean? But, you're bothering me. Yeah, but you know what I mean? That, that's just me, though. You know what I yeah. mean? I'm just, this is, I'm just cocky like that, yeah. I guess. You so know when you're a mean? baller, you won ball. Exactly. And, you know what what and it, he, he was making the game look so fun, and I'm like, oh, I got to get in here. And I got to play <laughs> with my boy, you know what I'm saying? Like, coach, put us in the game together. Let's rock out, you know? So he did that, and um, yeah, we had a good time together. Shout out to Speedy Claxton. What's up, homie? So as yeah. far as your pro career, like, what places have you played as a pro? The places around the world, or yeah. is this um, in the NBA? Well, NBA around the world. Um, well, I had a couple workouts. You know what I'm saying? I'm following my um, uh, being drafted, it, um, don't, being you know in, in the draft, not being drafted, but I worked out for like uh, seven teams, mm -hmm. and um, and all of them was great workouts. And now, if I had an agent, you know what I'm saying, to follow up with them teams, you know what I'm saying, to really, you know what I'm saying, they doing their job, everything would have been smooth, I think. But I didn't have that, you know what I'm saying? They wasn't, it wasn't a voice. It was basically it's just on paper. It looks good on paper, you know what I mean? But they wasn't really a voice pushing for me. And that's what players need in yeah. any industry, yeah. you know what I'm saying? With the music industry, if you don't got the good backing and the good representation, you know what I'm saying? And then, you know, you ain't going to go but so far. And that's what happened with me. So I figured out, 
you know what I'm saying, early. And you know, it helped me until I am up now, you know what I'm saying? I don't gotta worry about playing ball, you know what I'm saying? Ever again if I don't want to, you know what I'm saying? So that's what that happened. You know, I'm glad that happened early and during my career. They showed me, you know, it's bullshit in it. Mm -hmm. And it's a lot that a lot of people don't know about. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a crazy industry, you know. But it's business. It's politics, it's business though. It's politics, I love it. I mean it's hundreds of millions of dollars yeah, on the line. Million. That's right, yeah. And it's it's a lot understand. of money in the line and it's a lot of people out there that want to do it. So it's like, okay, yeah. if he don't want to do it, psh, yeah. man, there's all these people in line waiting. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Why that's should we trip off him? Mm -hmm. And that's how it is. So right now in 2016, what you got going on now? Well, I got a lot of things on my plate, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm doing this um, documentary and that should be out, you know, um, by, the, by the end of this summer. I'm, I'm pushing forward like September mm -hmm. and um, I'm doing. A, I'm also doing a book. You know what I'm saying. And this, and, and the book is everything gonna be. You know what I mean. I'm not. I'm not covering. I'm not sensing to nothing. You know. It might be a lot of people mad. You know what I'm saying. But who cares? You <laughs> What's know what it about? It's about, you know your know basketball it's about yeah. About basketball. It's about. You know what I'm saying. The the, the the shadiness of the business. You know what I'm saying. The crooked of the business. And you know a lot a lot of things. So you know what I'm saying. People gotta. <laughs> if you know if you have a kid and he's in sports or any industry or. If you just want to be successful, you know what I mean. You you will have to um, get get that book. And that should be out by um, next year, sometime. Mm -hmm. That's what's up. So mm -hmm. as far as the other the younger generation, the next generation of ballers that's maybe watching and maybe want to go to the next level, pursue a career. What what message do you have for them? I don't got no message for them. You know what I'm saying. I don't, I don't like the youngest. You know what I'm saying. They got to <laughs> learn on their own. <laughs> <laughs> No nah, I'm playing. I'm playing. No, I'm playing. No, I'm playing. No. I don't got nothing for them. I'm going to say something no. to the kids. <laughs> nah, man. It's all about the future. You know, yeah. it's all about the future. Um, my best advice, you know what I'm saying, to um, the, the young kids that, that wants to, you know, eat off this game and make it, you know, it's, it's, it's so much you could do. You could see the whole world. Um, just off of pigskin, you know what I mean? Um, you get your full ride. Um, but basically, you know, the grades is going to come first. Stay in school. Um, I know it's cool, you know what I'm saying, to, you know, watch the videos and, you know, seeing, like, you know, club life. That was my problem, you know what I mean? I had a big problem because I, I just wanted everything too fast. <laughs> but that's the matrix, you know what I mean? You, you just got to take your time. You young and everything's going, you know, happen for you. Just got to stay focused, put in the work, put in the time, put in the effort, listen to your parents um, and all the tag along. Stop all that, man. You know, you don't need no groupy dudes with you. You know what I'm saying? Because the, the dudes going to tag along just like, you know what I'm saying? The brides, you know, the girls, I'm sorry. Um, oh, it's the brides. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, you know, you just got to just keep your t um, circle t um, tight, man. I wish I'd have learned that, you know. When I learned, you know, about the age, <laughs> yeah, I was I was out of learn that, you know, what I'm saying early too, but I didn't, you know, what I mean, and I got caught up, you know, what I'm saying a lot of times because of the people, you know, um, that I rock with. Now I close my circle, you know, what I'm saying, and I rock by myself, you know, what I'm saying, like shoot, at the end of the day, you know, what I mean, it's about you, because you know, um, it's blood, sweat, and tears, you know, what I mean, they ain't gonna be running them out. <laughs> Uh, them, them hills and the coaches yelling at you, you know what I'm saying? You feel like you're about to throw up, you know what I mean? <laughs> or you stressing about that SAT trying to get in college. Your partner ain't going to take that for you, you know what I'm saying? You're going to have to do that for yourself. You're going to have to, uh, you know what I mean, do, um, you're going to have to study yourself, you know what I mean? And, and, and family is first, you know? Have a st strong, you know, support system because your family's going to be there if you play ball or Whatever you do, if you don't play ball, they still gonna be there, you know what I'm saying, supporting you. So um, my, my advice is just school, um, all that other side activities, limit that. Grind, grind in the gym, stay in the gym, stay in, getting your studies. And um, college, man, go to college, you know, and, and find someone that is a good mentor, you know what I'm saying? Because everybody's gonna be, you know, talking to you, being in your ear, yeah, how good you is and how they thinking, you know what I'm saying? You you know, they gonna they gonna build you up like you Michael Jordan, you know what I'm saying? You gotta humble yourself to be like, man, listen, man, relax, you know. Let me put in the time what I need to do. Studies, court. Studies, court. 
the club. Hey, I did that. You know what I'm saying? That, that That's going to hurt your game. You know what I'm saying? Leave the clubs alone. Leave the girls alone until, you know what I'm saying, you sitting on some, you know what I'm saying, some money. You know what I mean? Then you can do whatever. Because then, you know what I'm saying, you have the choice if you want to play or not, you know? Yeah. So. That's what's up. Yeah. Well, I mean, here, bro, Super Tim has been um, City Hoop TV. I want to thank my man Val Brown for coming on through. It's thank you, Tim. Yeah. For all y'all cats out there that's balling, make sure you take the words of advice. Stick to your ball. Stick to balling. Don't let the outside stuff come in, in your way. Stick to school because you can't ball forever. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Once the balling is over, even when you ball, you can always establish yourself and doing something outside of basketball. So you won't get caught up like AI losing 175 million, mm. Mm. getting 175 million. Don't know what you did with it. Mm. But I'm here on Super Tim. We got more right here for Super TV. Want to go to Decipher? Check out this video from one of the local hip hop stars. We're gonna be back with more Super TV. That's what's up.